power of a new microphone. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Roll call of Alderman. Alderman Hazel? Here. Alderman Kinsella? Here. Alderwoman Pusa? Here. Alderman Bittner? Here. Alderman Randall? Here. Alderman Tyler? Here. Alderman Anthony? Here. Alderman Obian? Here. Alderwoman Schaefer? Here. Alderman Dentleman? Here. Alderman Gah? Here. Alderwoman Steele? Here. Alderman Wygott? Here. Alderman Elmore? Here. Alderman Wigington? Here. Alderman Barfield? Here. All the aldermen are present. Roll call department heads. City Treasurer Hart? Here. City Attorney Horner? Here. Police Chief Bill Clay? Fire Chief Tom Poor? Here. Finance Director Jamie Matrix? Here. City Engineer Tim Gregowitz? Here. Director of Maintenance Ken Vaughn? Here. Human Resource Director Sherry Faber? Here. Director of Parks and Recreation Debbie Belville? Here. Health and Housing Director Bob Sabo? Here. Director of Public Works Jason Poole? Here. Director of Wastewater, Royce Carlisle. Here. Director of Economic Development, Anissa McCaskill. Here. Director of Library, Leander Spearman. Here. Captain, Captain Ice Camp's here for Chief Clay. Uh, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are able and you would stand with me to join, we're going to call Boy Scout Tru uh, Cub Pack 41 from Wingate School is going to come forward, and they're going to lead us in the Pledge of, the Le Pledge of Allegiance. They're working on one of their citizenship badges, and they're all working towards their arrow of light so they can become Boy Scouts in the spring. Gentlemen, we're glad you're here. You're our first Boy Scout since we've remodeled City Hall. Whenever you're ready. Gentlemen, thank you. <laughs> All the times I was in here today, I didn't pay attention to that. Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to welcome you. This is the, uh, the maiden voyage of uh, coming into the remodeled city hall. We still have some things to do. Uh, it was pretty hectic around here the last couple of days. Uh, my sincere thanks. I saw Mike uh, Chris back in the back from Impact Strategies. Uh, they have been excellent to work with. It was a little, little hairy this morning when we got here, getting a few things figured out, how we started moving back in upstairs. The, the clerk, treasurer, mayor, finance, uh, we will all be back in here for business on Monday the 9th. The, my office is, and, the, and, the, uh, and the, the, the mayor's office and the finance office will actually be here this week, but give us a day or two to unpack our boxes. We're, we're kind of digging through everything. and find, We'll find it, but we'll dig into. Um, economic development, engineering, and housing will remain at 407 East Lincoln. Uh, there is hope and plans in the future, but it's going to take some time and money to finish remodeling the rest of the police station, but uh, a lot's already been done. New roof, we got it out, all the asbestos, the jails are all gone, and uh, the elevator's roughed in, which we never had an elevator in this building behind us. So there's a lot of work already been done, so as we can appropriate the money for the next phase, then we'll get those departments over here under one roof. So it's an exciting time, bear with us. Uh, we are going to have an open house and rededication on Saturday, October 21st at 10 o'clock in the morning. Weather permitting, we're going to have the dedication right outside. We, the council's already approved uh, closing off Illinois Street for a little time for that ceremony. That's what they did in 1959. So when we did a little research and found the newspaper articles and everything, we thought we ought to try to, re to reduplicate that. Uh, so you'll hear more about it. There's quite a bit of uh, uh, newness to the lobby, a lot of ADA handicap accessible uh, improvements. There's bathrooms right behind uh, the wall. When you go out in the hallway, eventually you'll be able to cut right through there. I don't know if that's unlocked tonight. But 
the handicapped bathrooms are right behind here. There's more. The old bathrooms over there uh, are be remodeled handicapped. We put another emergency exit up here, which we never had before. And the bathrooms on the second floor of the administration building are handicapped. Uh, we finally, uh, for the first time, you can walk right in, which it never was before. There were stairs and revolving doors. So if you were truly in a wheelchair or a walker, it was very difficult to access City Hall. We've also made a number of safety improvements. Uh, as you see, it's, a it's terrible, but when you listen to the news every day, we have a uh, metal detector and, and we're still working on all the procedures and that, but it's all for the best, it's all necessary. We will not use the balcony upstairs. They're seating for about 32 to 36 people approximately, but we won't use it until we fill the first floor. And that's just for purposes of the police helping monitor and make sure that we, you know, can can keep an eye on if somebody need, has a need that we can. But when we have that, we'll have to have to pay attention upstairs as well. Uh, I want to remind you, Alderman, we got new microphones. Please speak into them. Rich is getting all the new equipment down. We are still filming for the for the cable that uh, through through the uh, uh, cooperation of Lindenwood and through the cable, Charter Cable, and we do record the minutes that we have to each meeting because of by law. So please speak into them, and, uh, and like I said, we, we do appreciate everybody respecting the railing. Uh, we just had times in the past had way too many people coming rushing forward without permission, and sometimes it was a little overwhelming. So this design, I think, works very well. And we got some room down here where we can actually have a wheelchair pull in several several spots that you could actually have a wheelchair be present where with the old pews we couldn't do that either. So uh, it'll take a little getting used to, but I think it's going to be very nice. And I just thank you for your patience. Uh, we'll talk some more at the dedication, but we certainly thank Lindenwood for hosting us over a year. And uh, we thank the city staff and all the people on the design and build team because it was a lot of work taking this 60-year-old building and, and, and bringing it back to life. So with that, we move forward. Uh, we have a public hearing this evening. Well, let me go to the safety tips real quick because we haven't been in here for a while. If we had to leave this building for some reason, such as smoke or fire, or we had to get out, tonight the two front, the front and rear entrances are open. This you can get out, but I'll be honest with you, I don't have a clicker yet for the... Uh, for the gate to get out from there, but you can get out between the buildings. But we still tell people if we had to evacuate, we still like to tell everybody to go to the sign in front of the courthouse to get away from the building and then kind of take a look and see the people sitting next to you if they all showed up so we can get a count. You hate, not, you hate to think about those things, but as you watch the news each and every day, I think we're all reminded that things happen pretty, pretty crazy and pretty fast. Um, if we had a storm, we do have, we had to go and, and get out of here because of the storm, we would go down across the lobby, the staff would guide you, and there's stairs to the basement, and we do have an adequate space down there for a storm shelter. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit unusual tonight. We had the pledge, but I am going to ask for a moment of silence. Um, I think last night uh, the horrific news we heard in Las Vegas was just absolutely any city, any state's worst nightmare. And it's just been way too often we've been seeing these terrible acts of violence. So I would ask that we'd all might just bow and think about those poor families and those poor people and those responders, those emergency responders, who, as they were saying on the news tonight, were running in to the danger when everybody else was running away. So let's pause for a moment and just uh, think of these people. Thank you very much. Um, and now we open for a public hearing. There's two public hearings. The first public hearing is number 5A on the agenda. The public hearing before the City Council is the City of Belleville for the acceptance of credit card payments. And I'm going to ask, uh, Dean, are you, is this part of this, what you guys talked about? I mean, you want anything to say at all? Well, what we're doing is just simply uh, clearing up a uh, resolution that we've already passed to accept credit cards for Illinois ePay. Um, it was very strict, and that, that was what that was, the resolution was for. And so now that we've 
gone to other providers, we need to uh, clean up our uh, resolution to accept credit card payments just in general. And this is what this is for. And, and the requirement is that Mr. Carter guides us as we did have to officially hold a public hearing. So is there anyone here this evening that has any questions, comments? This is your time to voice it about the new credit card uh, acceptance of credit card payments and the way we have kind of actually improved this system. Um, if there's no questions by the council, there was information I think in the past provided at some of the committee meetings we talked about. But if no one has any questions, it's a formality we do this. I will officially close this first public hearing. And now I'm going to turn right around and I'm going to open up a public hearing. Number 5B on the agenda. And the public hearing before you is the, uh, for the City Council of Belleville for a right-of-way dedication plat for Frank Scott Parkway, parcel number 08-07.0-302-0-0. And the next set of numbers is 08-07.0-302-012. And then we go to 08-07.0-302-016. Then we go to parcel number 08-07.0-302-019. A couple more, 08-07.0 dash 302-020. The next parcel is 08-07.0-304-001. The next one is 08-07.0-304-002. And the last one is 08-07.0-302-051. My explanation for this is when Frank Scott Parkway was improved, well, Mayor Kern was still mayor, I was an alderman, um, these dedications of these uh, on the plat, this right away was never formally dedicated uh, to the city, correct Tim? And this cleans it up, um, we, we kind of stumbled across something when we were looking for something a number of months ago and we found out that that act was never totally followed up on back in about 2001. So tonight's action uh, and this public hearing is in case there's any questions, this is just as we do so often, we find that sometimes things in the past maybe weren't totally kind of polished off and we're trying to correct these so, so that our, our records and understanding match with the county and the other filing agencies that record these. Any questions on what we're doing here? It's, it's really a formality of improving some records and everything. The city attorney has looked it all over, the city engineer and others from the county, and this is a formality. If no one has any particular questions, comments, or additions, I will officially close this requirement of this public hearing for this action. Okay, I now open public participation. I will call on you if you would like to come forward and use the microphone there that you can get to right on the other side of the gate. Come forward after I call you. Please give your name. Try to keep your comments to two to three minutes. Keep them uh, of good character. And we're gonna have the character word right after public participation. And. Uh, please try to keep them to a topic of some business in the city. So anyone this evening would like to uh, speak to the council? Anyone? Yes, ma'am, please come forward. I'm Pam, and I'm a little upset that the hospitals are moving, but I know it's an improvement, but. What is people supposed to do when they don't have transportation to get to the new hospital? Pam, I agree with you. I'm upset. And, and I, I went to Chicago with many of us, and we spoke out against St. Elizabeth's leaving. They've been here for 140 years approximately. Uh, I would say, first of all, you have the right to certainly convey your concerns to uh, HSHS, which is the parent company of St. Elizabeth's Hospital. I would also say that, um, you know, 
We're fortunate that we have Memorial Hospital here in Belleville. Yeah, I know, but and I thought they were moving too. No, well, no, 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 no. Memorial built a hospital in Shiloh, a satellite hospital, but their main flagship and their biggest part of the hospital is here in West Belleville on Memorial Drive. That is not leaving. Oh, it ain't. Okay. In fact, they're continuing to make improvements and actually growing it also. Oh. Their administration and all those, they have, that hospital in Belleville is much bigger than the one in Shiloh. That is a satellite in Shiloh. Oh, okay. So you, we're not losing both hospitals. Don't, oh. that, I'm glad you brought that up in case anybody else had those questions. So Memorial Hospital is here staying committed to Belleville oh. and, and we're certainly happy for that. I guess I might have to get used to saying Memorial. I'm just a fan. Well, sometimes we just got to adjust. I, I understand. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Dawn Adams. I do a lot of walking in this town, and when I walk in front of Lindenwood, they fly out of there. I almost got ran over. And also, the lights down on the west end of, down, of town by McDonald's do not work, and the crosswords or the crosswalks, people are crossing through there, and I've seen a lady get run over right in front of there. But if you walk further down to the lights, they don't work. This is at 46th of Maine? Yes, right down there by CVS, on the, okay. and then also the ones in Shop and Save. Okay. They don't work either. Well, we, so. you, you're the city engineer is nodding his head. He will get out and check on that. Mm -hmm. And certainly the police captain is here, and we will also have the police to make a report. If they, they always are real good about well, calling I've seen, a lot, I've seen a lady get hit in front of there. Okay. And I've had a few other friends. Well, get we hit need in front to know. They think I, it's a raceway. I think the speed I, limit should be well, lower. Well, our officers are out there. there doing things, for, you know, monitoring it. But we thank you for having the, the consideration to come here tonight and remind us. And we will check on that with the staff uh, immediately. All right. Thank you. And God thank bless. you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Katie Nelson with the Belleville Area Humane Society, and uh, this comment is in reference to 12A and B on the agenda, the Halloween Pet Parade in uh, downtown Belleville. First of all, I just want to thank everyone, uh, business owners in Belleville and the Chamber of Commerce who have collectively uh, worked with us to try to create a fun community event uh, for everyone that benefits the Humane Society. This is the, um, I have some folks here from the Humane Society with us, the Board of Directors. Um, we just appreciate all the support that we receive from the city as far as uh, promoting our events, and I wanted to say thank you again for your consideration for relocating our block party to the east side of the, um, the street. We think it's going to be a really fun event. It's the fifth annual Halloween Pet Parade, and um, Mayor Eckert, as you pointed out, in a time like this when you wake up to tragic news or uh, natural disasters taking taking place in, in different areas throughout our, our country. It reminds us more than ever about community coming together. So um, thank you for your consideration, and uh, we're really looking forward to having the, the route finalized today so that we can move forward with our promoting and planning. And, and thank, thank you, you again to the business and, owners, if there's anybody. The, from, well, I don't know. I didn't see any of the ones, but the, I did ask, the, and they did, I asked the Humane Society to sit down with a couple of the business owners I talked to Wendy File as recent as Friday, and she felt that they had come to a, a agreed upon, and I've heard from a few others. So I think I've heard no more objections. I don't know if any of you have. I think we've got this worked out in an in in agreement fashion. So I, I think this will, will come up a little later on the agenda, but we appreciate it. Uh, I know when the, we had the first pet parade, there was maybe what, 40 dogs, animals? Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's, it's grown so it's much like, we outgrew what, the parking lot. Well, oh yeah, and it's probably up to almost what 300 last two or 300. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. It's it's amazing. I, I I I sat and watched the last couple of years, and I just had to smile the whole time. <laughs> all the people walking their dogs in this parade. So um, I thank you for doing it. We thank the Humane Society because you know the animal control aspect and the number of pets on the streets, and they work with adoption and everything else as well as St. Clair County animal control, and uh, the city, it would be very difficult for us to get into all of that, so we're very appreciative of the services you provide and help us. So uh, very good, and we'll, we'll talk about this on the agenda, and if there's any questions, they'll bring them up then. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else this evening? 
Hearing none, I'm going to close. Is there a hand back there in the back? Yes, sir. Didn't see you. Stuart Lannert, Belleville. First of all, I'd like to say that metal detector is a total waste of money. Anybody had any serious intentions of doing damage in this place would stand before they ever went into the metal detector and wipe out the back row real fast. And, and then you just walk through the metal detector and it's useless. It's like the Maginot line in WW2. They just go around it or ignore it. And uh, Belleville wants $12 million from taxpayers for Meredith Home when public servants, and I use that word real loosely, servants, spend the state into $350 billion in debt and the Hofbrauhaus will never make a profit unless they have Nazi and Antifa rallies like they did in 1920 in Munich, Germany, which will bring out the crowds like they did back then. That's the only way I see them making enough money. Thank you. Okay, if there's any, any other comment, hearing none, I will close public participation. And now it's my privilege to ask Jalen Williams and Kayla Bell, two students from Belva West High School who are part of the Basic Initiative Board, to come to the microphone and speak to us briefly about the character word of the month. Folks? So for me, responsibility is more like uh, balancing my academic life and my sports life. So I play a lot of sports, so I got to make sure I got my homework done and keep up with chores and stuff like that. So. Thank you. We appreciate it. We need to be reminded of these character words. And as uh, police chief and fire chief and others know, as we hire and swear people in uh, for many years now, we talk to them about their character. And so we're, we're listening and learning from our students what you guys have been talking about for a long time because character is, is really what's, what it's all about. And if you can't be responsible and get to work on time and, 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 and follow the rules, then it's really hard for us to hire people that don't do that. So thank you for being here tonight, BASIC, and uh, keep up uh, setting good examples for us. Okay, uh, we move on now to the approval of the City Council minutes. We have the City Council minutes meetings from September 18, 2017. So what is your pleasure? So moved. Motion to accept and file by Alderman Wigington, second by Alderman Schaefer. Alderman Kinsilla. Your Honor, uh, there is an amendment that went to the to these that went out at three o'clock today. Are all the council members aware of that? Okay. And you accept that, Mr. Wigington yep. and Sir, Alderman Schaefer? Yes, I do, Mayor. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, very good. So that, that's been some corrections that were put into there, and, and that was passed on. So with that noted, are there any other comments about the minutes? All in favor of accepting and filing the minutes signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have the claims payroll and disbursements. I'd ask for a motion to approve the claims and disbursements in the amount of $1,790,390. $309.53 and the payroll in the amount of $837,888.18. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Alderman Kinsella and second by Alderman Pusa. Any additions or corrections to those uh, requests? Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Dentleman? Aye. Ga? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygott? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. We move on now to oral reports. Master Sewer Alderman uh, Dittleman? On behalf of the Master Sewer Committee, I'd like to make a motion, 11-A1, motion to approve the transfer of waterline ownership to Illinois American Water Company. Would be okay if we do more. Does anybody have a problem if we read them together? From, from Master Sewer. Proceed. Uh, two, um, 11 
A2, motion to approve the IEPA loan agreement authorization. And number three, 11-A3, motion to approve a time extension change order, number five, for the LTCT Phase Three Southside Park lift station and relief sewer project, E04-110194. Do I hear a second to the motion from Alderman Hazel? Everybody understand we have three motions coming from Master Sewer, the three that were just read by Chairman Dittleman. If there's no further questions, roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dittleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygott? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motions carry. At this time, I bring to you a motion from the Board of Fire and Police and ask for you to consider a motion to approve promotions of engineer John Vermeerian to captain and firefighter Ryan Mahoney to engineer, effective October 9, 2017, at 12 a.m. midnight. I move. Motion by Alderman, uh, Alderman Anthony, second by Alderman Hazel. Discussion, anything? Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Ga, Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygott? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Those motions carried. Chief, you want to introduce those two gentlemen? Thank you, guys. We appreciate all of your service, and uh, we thank you for taking on more responsibilities. This time we flip the page, and we have the Ordinance and Legal Committee. Alderman Wigington. Uh, thank you, Mayor. On behalf of the Ordinance and Legal Committee, I make a motion to authorize the acceptance of credit card payments for authorized obligations to the City of Belleville. So moved. Motion by Alderman Wigington. I hear a second by Alderman Schaefer. Do I hear discussion? Roll call. Hazel. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Pusa. Aye. Bittner. Aye. Randall. Aye. Tyler. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Ovian. Aye. Schaefer. Aye. Dentleman. Aye. Ga, Aye. Steele, Aye. Wygott, Aye. Elmore, Aye. Wigington, Aye. Barfield. Aye. Motion carries. We have a couple motions coming from the Zoning Board of Appeals. I think we have, what, two, Jenny? Yeah, just two. You want to read those, please? Sure. 11D146, August 17, Sonoma Cap, Adam Hill. A two-fold request for bulk variances to permit a property at 7000 and 7009 West Main Street, parcel number 07010417005 to A, maintain a site coverage of 42% and B, setback reductions to permit the following. Zero in between units, 10 feet on the east and west property lines, a 15 foot rear setback and a 20 foot front yard setback in a B1 multifamily residence district. Applicable portion of the zoning code 162.570 and 162.092, Ward 4. A motion was made by Don Rockwell to approve the request. It was seconded by Tim Price. All members present voted in the affirmative. The motion carried 4 to 0 to 1. Do I hear a motion on this request? Motion by uh, Alderman Ovian. Do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Anthony. Uh, the motion I'm asking for is a motion to uh, uh, approve the Zoning Board's recommendation to have the proper ordinance drawn. If there's no further questions, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. 11D2, 56 September 17, Oak Tree Management, a request for a special use permit for a liquor license for Hofbra House Restaurant at 123 St. Eugene Drive, parcel 070303. 00007, located in a C2 heavy commercial district. Applicable portion of the zoning code 162.248, Ward 8. A motion was made by Tony Togis to approve the request with the following stipulation. One, in the name of the applicant only. It was seconded by Tim Price. All members present voted in the affirmative. The motion carried four to zero to one. Motion by Alderman Wigington. Do I hear a second by Alderman Barfield? Discussion. Yes, sir. Real quick. I'm glad to see that uh, the 
seems to be progress being made. Do we have a date when it might be opening? Since they I don't have the exact date. They're trying hard to be soon, but there's, you know, things they're still working out, but they're working hard. They have to have this passed so they can tie in with their uh, federal ATF license for brewing, and it, it has to be going so we, there's no hold up there. Okay. It's a very complicated when you have a brewer's license. It makes the local license a very much, com much very more complicated have, process. Have they, do they have to apply through the state also? This is all part of it. It's part of the it's state? It's all part of it. Okay. We've sat, Mr. Harner and I have sat with them, and everything's on track, but this is the next step. So uh, the zoning board saw fit to bring it forward here. It's, it's never been a secret about anything they're doing. It's been very straightforward. So at this time, if there's no further questions, yes, sir. Does the motion include the stipulation? And the stipulation again was Mr. Clerk? In the name of the applicant only. Oh, and that's, yeah, in the name of the applicant only. That's always we. Okay. So we have a motion and we have a second. All in favor to have this approved and have the proper ordinance drawn signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. We move on to administration. From time to time, you're aware, and Bob, you're still here, aren't you? Same one? Yeah. We have a property at 326 North 10th Street that's coming to us, uh, St. Clair County trustee uh, is asking if we'll be interested. Bobby, is this the one we're gonna take down? We're, we're in the process of demoing this house, but the house is in a tax sale right now. So what's gonna happen is, if we don't take this action to secure this, then we take it down, and then somebody else buys the lot, we won't even have a chance to get any, recoup anything on the demo at all whereas sometimes we recoup a little bit on the lot, whatever. So we're asking tonight for your approval to spend $779.25 uh, so we can purchase this property officially from the St. Clair County trustee uh, in this amount. Do we have a motion by Alderman Tyler, second by Alderman Pusa? Any discussion on this? Everybody understand? So Roll. So it's, it's got nothing to do with the demolition. That's a separate process. We're, that the court's going to come down and say it has to be taken down. We would then lien the property, yeah, but we're gonna have to pay that and, and hopefully recoup a little something on the lot. But we're getting down a danger, a, a, a very derelict property. Any further questions? Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Gentlemen, Aye. Guy, Aye. Steele, Aye. Wygott, Aye. Elmore, Aye. Wigington, Aye. Barfield. Aye. Motion carries. Do you want to read the two communications sure. together? Is everybody okay? Anybody okay with it's no it's the same. If you're against one, you're against the other, I think. Okay. Twelve A Halloween Pet Parade, October 29th, 2017. Request from the Belleville Humane Society to hold their annual pet parade on October 29th. 2017 from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. with applicable street closures. 12B, Humane Society Block Party, October 29, 2017. Request from the Belleville Humane Society to hold a block party on October 29, 2017 from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Requesting the closure of the first block of East Main Street between Illinois 159 and High Street from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Do I hear a motion to approve these two re Alderman Dittleman, second by Alderman Schaefer? Any further questions? Mayor. Yes. A um, couple questions. Uh, what goes on during the block party, during that period of, a period of time when it's closed? First there's a parade. They, Is there vendors or exactly what goes on during the... You, one of you girls want to comment? It's, it's an educational process and also some about the adoption, et cetera, right? that participate with us or partner with us. There's also going to be other animal welfare organizations there as well, and uh, a lot of families come out to it. So um, it shouldn't be, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty short period of time, um, but it, it is a very family-friendly event. We'll have some rock painting, um, bounce house, snow cones. What am I missing here? Food trucks. Um, I'm sorry. Photo booth. So family. A couple, couple more questions also, if you don't mind. The, the pet parade is an annual event. Yeah. How well, about now the block party? Is this the first the, time? The, no, the block party's always been an annual event too, but it okay. was held in the past uh, 
in the first block of, of uh, well, right there at First and Main and Pitchers, but Pitchers is out of business. And um, they had asked Seven to participate. And, and Seven's always been uh, a supporter of the Humane Society uh, before and particularly now with the new owners. I think they've been very, very, very much so. So they asked to move it. So they, we explained to them if we crossed, closed off 159, it gets a little bit more expensive with the police, et cetera, to close off the highway because going across the fountain takes more, more police officers. So that's when they came to us originally and asked about doing it, the whole thing on the east side of 159, and they came up with this. Now, included in this, I would ask you or tell you, one of the things I offered to the chamber on the behalf of one of the business owners is that we would mark off two, three maximum uh, stalls behind Ben's because one of his concerns in the past was sometimes people bring in uh, sewing machines for repair and to carry them from very far is heavy. So I said, we, could, we couldn't block off the whole lot. Uh, we can't start that. We'll be doing it all the time requested, but we can block off a couple stalls. Just one more question too. You said that Wendy Files, the director of the chamber, went out and pulled some of the uh, businesses or merchants. She's had communication with and some of Mayor, them. You, I mean, you have to know, I mean, we're, how many did she talk to, and, and, and was it all a positive feedback that we have? Well, I would tell you, I would, I would tell you this, concerns? Roger. I think if we, if they hadn't come to this conclusion that they came to last Thursday or whenever they met, or a, a week or a couple of days ago, we'd have people here in opposition. They have, they are, they are. I'm not saying they're jumping up and down, but they've come to an agreement, and they've come to acceptance of what's been proposed as a compromise. If you remember at the last meeting, when I found out that day there was a lot of concern being raised, I asked for it to be tabled, and I asked them, and the Humane Society did exactly what I asked of them. They called them up and asked for a meeting to sit down and try to talk through it, and this is what's come up with it. And, and as a vehicle of the chamber, I've heard that, that they're, they're content with this. And may I ask this young lady, were you, were you or anybody in your group involved in this discussion where you uh, came to a conclusion with the merchants and businesses that uh, that they would be on board? I mean, were you or anybody in your group? Yes, I was. Uh, myself and Christina Boron and Shelley Corvus, we met with... What was, uh, the tone of, what was the tone of that meeting and how did the businesses and merchants... Uh, we met with just Beth from Ben Franklin, uh, to my Which knowledge... She's the most vocal. I'm sorry? She's the most vocal. She expressed, yeah, she expressed concern and uh, the goal that we had for that meeting was uh, hoping that we could all bend just a little bit to accomplish something for our community and also to promote business and we discussed ways in which we could do that to help um, facilitate business for for folks on Sunday because we absolutely don't want to hurt any business but rather uh, bring people out on a Sunday a day otherwise they wouldn't be out. Which is a good thing. I just want to make sure that the people that you brought the table to the table were all on the same page. And they were all invited. Uh, yeah, and, and Wendy File uh, particularly, um, she, you know, she called me I think Friday at 5 and, and that was the last conversation that I had um, that she wanted to work with the business side to try to come to an agreement that would work for everyone and I do believe that at the end of the day it was um, sort of each of us would have to, you know, bend a little bit on something that we, we wanted in order to achieve oh, the goal. Would you say everybody walked away happy? I mean. uh, yes, I would. Um, for the most part, um, I don't know if some can always be considered happy, but I think it was very, it was very. I, uh, I, I will say, I will say that um, that as the Humane Society, you know, we're not trying to throw a wrench in any business by any means, but rather uh, brainstorm ideas in which we can promote folks from to to go into these businesses on a Sunday if and they on are Sunday, open. Sunday, sometimes things are quiet downtown. They'll bring three, three, four hundred people downtown, right to their doorstep. Oh, yeah. That can be well, very. I, positive. I agree with that. I thank you for sitting down with these people. I think that what the council was very concerned about everybody working together, and, and the mayor's right, you know, this could bring more business on a Sunday, um, and uh, it's, it's not the busiest day of the week, but I wanted to make sure that everybody sat down and everybody had a chance to voice their opinion. No, I'm, I'm very convinced of that, Roger. I think that was yeah, done, and thanks to you ladies at my our request when I talked to you. They, they took the initiative and did it, and I think that's the way we should do business. So thank you. So we're ready for a vote. We have a motion and a second with the uh, things discussed, right, Mrs. Ms. Clerk? Yes. Uh, I'll call for a roll call because it's kind of a unique vote. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? 
I want to preface this. I was going to vote against it, but since you sat down with the business owners, I will now vote for it. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. Good job and thank you for working with us, okay? I'll see you at the pet parade. Um, yeah, 30th? Is that right? 29th. 29th. I won't be here this year. First year, I'm going to miss it. Okay. We're moving on, uh, ladies and gentlemen, now to petitions. We have none. We have resolutions. I, uh, I'd ask for a motion to read by title only resolution 3313 and resolution 3314. So moved. Motion by Alderman Hazel. I hear a second. Second by Alderman Pusa. Any discussion on reading by title only and as a group? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 3313, a resolution of the City of Belva, Illinois, authorizing the execution of the dedication of right of way for Frank Scott Parkway. 14B, resolution 3314. A resolution authorizing execution of a purchase contract with the St. Clair County Tax Agent for 326 North 10th Street. Do I hear a motion to approve these two resolutions? Motion by Alderman Bittner, second by Alderman Tyler. Do I hear any discussion? Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Ska? Aye. Steele, Aye. Wygant, Aye. Elmore, Aye. Wigington, Aye. Barfield. Aye. Motion carries. At this time, I'd ask for a motion to read by title only. Ordinance number 8105, 8106, 8108, and 8109. Do I hear a motion? Motion by Alderman Kinsella, second by Alderman Steele. Do I hear any discussion? Is there, you want to read these as a, by title only and as a group? So the motion includes title only as a group. All in favor, that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. 15A, Ordinance 8105-2017, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of credit card payments for authorized obligations to the City of Belleville. 15B, Ordinance 8106-2017, an ordinance authorizing the City of Belleville, St. Clair County, Illinois, to borrow funds from the Water Pollution Control Revolving Loan Program. 15C, Ordinance 8108-2017, a zoning ordinance in regards to case 46, August 17, Sonoma Cap, Adam Hill. 15D, Ordinance 8109-2017, a zoning ordinance in regards to 56, September 17, Oak Tree Management. I move we approve Ordinance 8105, 8106, 8108, and 8109. Motion by Alderman Kinsella, second. here's second by Alderman Gah. Discussion on these ordinances. Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. Is there any unfinished business? Go to motor fuel claims on a new business. I'd ask for a motion to approve the motor fuel claims of $10,774.06. Do I hear a motion about them? Elmore? Second by Alderman Pusa. Any discussion on the motor fuel claims? Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. If there's no action on the regular business, I'd ask for a motion to go into executive session to discuss Really tonight is litigation. We have them all listed there, but I don't think there's anything other than litigation. So do I hear a motion to go into executive session to, to discuss motion by Alderman Elmore, second by Alderman Steele. All in favor of going into executive session for a couple minutes for that purpose, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We might have a motion when we come back out, but ladies and gentlemen, there's virtually nothing else on the agenda. Thank you for coming to our maiden voyage of our new city hall. Every time you come back, you'll see new art, artwork up and other things, and it'll keep, keep improving. We're slowly back in regular session. 
Anybody else coming in? Nope. Rose. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I announced that we are back in regular sessions, but from what I uh, kind of understood uh, during the executive session, it sounds like, uh, uh, do I hear someone wanting to make a motion tonight? Uh, but motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn and a second by Alderman um, Tyler. Motion was by Alderman Wigington. So the only action this evening to close the meeting is a motion to adjourn. All in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries, we adjourn.